was headed down to Knoxville with a weekly load. You could smell a whiskey burning down Copperhead Road. Never get tired of that song. Copperhead Road by Steve Earle. It still holds relevance today. And Steve is in town promoting his 19th studio album. It's called Guy, a tribute to one of his mentors, Guy Clark. Let's understand the man who was Guy Clark. Please welcome his understudy. Can we call you that? Understudy? Absolutely. Steve Earle? Absolutely. And uh, we were just talking about Copperhead Road, but also there's a documentary out. And uh, in the documentary, there's a guy in the corner. And they're they're telling people to watch uh, watch out for this next guy. That's you, right? Can we, can we just take yeah, a look at it? It's a it's a it's a film called Heartworn Highways that was made in 1970. That's Christmas Eve, 1975. Guy's about 33, and I'm 20. And that's you right there. Yeah, that's me. Bill Callery to my right there, your left, and the guy named Richard Dobson. And guys, watch Susanna was sitting next to him, and uh, he just basically did that. He says, listen to this song. He was telling the guy that was operating the camera. We were really bad at being in documentaries. We always kind of had a hard time ignoring the camera. That's one of those deals. But well, you're I, 20 years old and you're playing with like one of your heroes. Yeah, I mean, because I followed Guy there on purpose. I didn't I already knew Towns Van Zandt, and they were best friends kind of for life. But, but Towns didn't live anywhere, and Guy had settled in Nashville, and so I decided to, to go there and... and uh, Austin, I'm from San Antonio, which isn't that far from Austin. There was something going on there, but it didn't appear serious to me. Yeah. And weather too good, girls too pretty, duck too cheap. <laughs> I knew I'd never get anything done there. So I went to Nashville. And, and, and you've got a lot done since. So That's town to guy. Yeah. Um, Why do you think it's taken this long for this album? Uh, well, I mean, I made the first, I made a record um, called Towns, you know, uh, record of Towns Van Zandt songs. Uh, quite a while after Towns passed away. Towns, um, you know, passed away in 97, I think, and I made the record in, you know, 2007 or something. So it was almost 10 years after he died. Guy passed away. He had Hodgkin's lymphoma for 10 years, and, you know, he he fought it pretty well and toured for uh, eight of those 10 years. And in the last ten, two years, he couldn't really tour like he used to. So I had to start going to Nashville. To, I live in New York now the last 14 years, and I still have a house there, and my mom's there, sister's there. So I go... See my mom. I go see my mom. Go see Guy, and um, but he, it finally caught up with him, and he passed away. And I knew I was going to have to make this record someday because I don't want to run into Guy on the other side having made the Towns record <laughs> and not made his. It would not go well for me. So, so I, I always knew. And and uh, making it now was, I could have made it later, but I wanted. I have another way more political record in mind that I want to come out in 2020, and timing's important for those kind of things. So I decided to make the Guy record now, which meant I could. Wait till 2020 to make the other record. And these are all his songs. Were you picking them because personally they mean something to you, yeah, or I, because they mean something to yeah, everybody? Yeah, I went through this whole thing of like I'm going to disappoint somebody, you know, by leaving certain songs out. He was uh, the difference between Guy and Towns was like the difference between Kerouac and Ginsberg, discipline and a whole lot. And then Guy lived, you know, like uh, a couple of decades longer and worked right to the end of his life. And so it's a way bigger body of work, and there's 16 songs on this album. And I, you know, I thought I worried about disappointing some folks that like this song or that song. I finally decided it's my Guy Clark record, and just to do the stuff I was personally connected to, and that's the way I, the way I chose them. So. And are are you happy the way they turned out? Because it's gritty and it's raw. It's, it's we did it all live. There's no overdub vocals. We kind of had to. We recorded in five days, 16 sides. We didn't overdub anything. But we rehearsed it a lot on soundcheck. We did a Copperhead Road 30th anniversary tour last year, which we actually came to Toronto with. Um, we were all over Canada with it, actually. From the fact, that I think the last show was in, was was two nights in in uh, Vancouver, and uh, we just uh, I, I, I I just rehearsed these songs on every soundcheck, and um, so we had them down pretty well. There was a couple of things we learned on the sessions, but most of it. We uh, we had down pretty cold, so so we got it pretty quickly. Are you hoping people will <clears throat> kind of rediscover Guy Clark or get to know him in the first yeah, place? A lot I, of people I, I wouldn't think recognize the, the name. Record. Yeah, that's 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 part of it. And my audience is bigger than either Towns's or Guy's was, and I think there are people that that uh, you know know about Towns because I made the record ten years ago. I think there'll be more people that know about Guy. You know, it's my audience isn't huge, but it's 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 you know it's there and it's permanent. And it's all around the world, so. I think it'll help. And the one regret, we're t I was reading this one regret you had, which you never had a chance to write with. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, neither one, when I, we first met, neither one of us would have even considered co-writing songs, and we just didn't do it. 
I do it sometimes for different reasons now. Um, there's a kid named Logan Ledger that has a record coming out soon that T-Bone Burnett produced, and T-Bone called me and said, I want you to write with this kid, and I did that as a favor to T-Bone originally, but the kid's really good. He's a great singer and a great writer. Um, you know, so projects like that, I'll co-write with people. I, I, I wrote a song with Miranda Lambert for, for my last record, uh, for just a duet for us to sing. I, I just... Uh, but Guy started co-writing basically because he was not feeling great the last few years of his life, and it kept him going, writing with these younger writers. And he asked me, he said, you know, at one point, he said, we need to write a song together. He said, not for anything except the grandkids. You know, that was the, that was the way he put it. And, and I said, yeah, we should do that. But, you know, I live in New York, and I've toured a lot the last couple of years. Um, played 200 shows last year, and... and it, um, which is insane, but uh, it was uh, it was it just never happened, and I do I do regret that. Steve, well, thank you very much for joining us today, and you're back in uh, the Kitabala in July, right? Yeah, and there's there's other dates around Ontario until they get Massey Hall finished. I'm kind of homeless in <laughs> Toronto, so so we'll, we're, I think we're going to opt for playing a lot of smaller Ontario dates. So if okay. you just look around, then we'll Maybe we'll be around. Come back for the opening of Massey yeah, Hall too. Cool. Thanks. And uh, the guy of the new tribute album from Steve Earle, you can get it by heading over to SteveEarle.com. We've got more on BT coming up after the break. Stay tuned.